Alright boys and girls and welcome back to another building video. This time we're taking a look at the medium-ish size group around about the 4 to 6 man range. Today I'm bringing you guys the Jaeger and I'm going to go ahead and break down some of the exciting features that might make you guys choose this base as next wipes base. It offers a spacious open court, of course has peaks to defend from. Our shooting floor is not only stable, aesthetically pleasing, but it's also highly effective. Lastly, the spread loot, the respawn capabilities, our compound and roof make this base a very scary online or offline raid. Lastly, if you guys enjoy building and you're looking to improve, you can join my Discord down below where there are lots of experienced builders that are happy to help you. If you'd like to go one step further, I'm live every Wednesday on Twitch at 6pm UK, reviewing your guys' bases and helping anyone out that may need it. And if you like the content that I produce, I have a second channel where I upload my wipes that you can also check out. Thanks guys, let's jump on with the tour of the base. Alright, as per usual, we're going to start off outside of a Satori Disconnectable. I've gone for a single door and a garage door option to defend my TC. However, you can do a combination of windows, doors, anything you like. Placing a foundation with a roof on top will disconnect our TC, allowing us to replace or move the main TC inside the main base. There's two of those in total and the base is symmetrical by two. Let's head inside our very bog standard gatehouse that takes us through into our compound. Big thanks to Bandicam for sponsoring today's video. Bandicam is a Rust gambling website that uses the wheel from in-game. They have a multitude of different game modes that you guys can try, and they also run giveaways pretty often, so you can try and get involved in those too. If you're going to hop on the site, make sure you use code SPINKY and try my link in the description. Remember guys, gambling is a source of entertainment. It's not a side hustle, so gamble what you can afford to lose. Make sure you're over 18 and be responsible about it. Thank you. Compound is defended via some turrets off of the bedrooms and some turrets hiding up on the main base there on the frames, if you can see those. Compound's got room for everything you could need, berries, furnaces, anything you want to slap down in there, refinery, all that good stuff. And we've got two bedrooms with a box per bed to allow you to respawn in compound and defend your base a little bit better. And those are those turrets there that I was talking about before. We'll go ahead and head through into the main base now. One of our front doors leads into our star base, and one of them is purely a mobility chute, taking us to second floor. This is obviously the one leading into starter, so here it is. It's a 2x3, so essentially three 2x1s, if you think of it like that. And uh, plenty of bog space, and you can just expand one 2x1 one at a time. You'll see that later on the tour, really easy to expand from. Very progressive indeed. Armor up our TC floor, so it's a metal and a armor to get to our TC. Plenty of boxes, bags, furnaces, and workbench, anything you need in there. I'm going to go ahead and take you around to the other entrance that I was on about. And this one will lead, of course, up to our second floor. So does the other one, but I'm just showing you both ways. So this one here is just honeycombed on the right instead of a single door. And then we can jump up our second floor. Got a battery on the left there. And then we are into our open core. Open core has got a couple of turrets to defend behind the garage doors, plenty of boxes, a couple furnaces and space for bags in the center. Nice mobility in here and there's two drop down peaks as well that cover the majority of this floor. A ladder hatch takes us up to the next set of uh, rooms. Where we've got some bedrooms to defend, our peak that looks into OC and our exit onto shooting floor. Our bedrooms are accompanied by a couple of vending machines that you could use to flex rockets in order to bait an online raid. We've got a ankle biter that looks into our shooting floor exit. And there's two boxes there as well where you can store your kits to go along with the bed. Again, another drop down peak and a ladder hatch. Base is symmetrical by two. We also have a roof peak up. I like to have a roof peak up not in shooting floor and one in shooting floor. Just in case one of those areas has been taken over, you can still defend your roof from the safety of this core area. Tower underneath there to help defend this level. And then we'll exit out the single door into shooting floor, just displaying that ankle biter there as well. Go ahead and we'll jump up the little breach peak section here with the roofs. Wonderful little head glitches out and about. Really like these angles that it provides. And of course behind us is another set of roof peak ups. No blind spots on here from the turrets and all the roof pickups combined. And we can drop onto the small boxes for a nice crouch meta peak that people may not expect. Heading further around, we have a combination of freehands and wide gap peaks. And an extra section over here that is a nice peak down too. Lots of angles throughout the shooting floor and a lot of places to hide as well in your shooting floor. 
from raid bases and anything else. If you happen to be taking on quite a few players in this one, you'll still have a good chance. Heading up one of our jump ups onto the roof. There's two of those in total. A couple of windows to check what's going on before we exit. And then you can see that our roof provides quite a few little half height peak downs. Some backwards facing roofs to defend us from a tall raid base. And the free hands create really nice angles as well. A couple of roofs that allow us to use mobility facing out the way. So that we can move all the way around our roof nice and easy. The siren light can be, uh, the searchlight sorry, can be accessed from the window and spun around and pointed at your teammates. Or at a specific angle or anything you might need during the night time. Four tards cover the roof nicely. Plenty of space for scrap heli minicopters and roof vending machine bunkers if you'd like that too. Four windmills cover everything on the base, and there's plenty of spots throughout for batteries. That concludes our tour, let's break down all of the costs. First of all on screen is the total build cost, here it is in box amounts, and lastly is the total upkeep, spread between three TCs, the main TC upkeeping the majority of that. Next here's a quick look at our footprint, just so you guys know exactly how much space you'll need to build the base. Alright, I think we're ready to go, let's jump on to the build tutorial. Kicking off today's base design, we're starting with a 2x1. And we'll wall it in a square for our TC and have a double door leading through so we can expand the base from there. TC is going to go in the back left corner as it'll be easier for us to get our half height triangle if we place our TC in this orientation. Double door in front and a couple of doors to seal it up and that's the cost for this star base. Now you have the option to expand further into a second 2x1 making us a 2x2 now. Coming with a loot room and a couple more doors. Then we can get our half height triangle that I was on about as well. Easy peasy. And a couple of ramps in here for added honeycomb. Added some doors on and that's the cost of the second starter base technically. Finally if you have a lot of mats on you you want to go all the way you can throw down the entire first floor. And once again, we're throwing down the ramps for honeycombing. Grab a ceiling on top of that. We'll throw on our last door. And this is the final cost in case you wanted to build the entire thing at once. Alright, let's work on the first floor now. And we're going to put down the entire footprint so you guys can make sure you've got enough space to build the base. Leaving out our free hands and wide gaps for just now, but this is just the core. Wrapping the longer side in triangles and finishing it off with a set of stone. Then round on the shorter end, we just do three triangles of honeycombing. Then expand the footprint slightly with a part of our shooting floor with that square and two triangles. And that's as wide as we're going to get the base footprint for just now. Let's expand our airlock out the way into the core. Then we can start with our jump up, making sure we place that door frame halfway up on the triangle. And then a double door exit out onto the grass. Finish off our honeycombing for the rest of this portion. And we'll replicate our entrance on the opposite side. No single door this time because only one side leads into starter. This one is purely going to lead into our jump up and take us uh, to second floor open core. On the shorter sides, we can just fill in our walls for the honeycombing all the way around. Nice and simple. Adding floors on top of that. And finishing off the rest of the walls on the base here. With that stone honeycombing. Next we can work on the mobility chute slightly. Starting with a half wall in front. Walling in the rest of our open core so we can work around that. The half wall leads into OC and the rest of the walls are to defend our boxes. We'll place a triangle to jump on top of with a wall at either side. And then we can add walls on the left and right as well so our mobility chute is just two triangles in total for the size of that. And we can continue to add floors and walls around here. Leaving our mobility chute in the centre. At the top of this mobility chute, we're going to have the half wall, low wall that's part of our shooting floor. 
So don't get too carried away and make sure you follow the tutorial. We'll go ahead and catch up on the opposite side as well. Make sure we're doing both things on each side. Base is symmetrical by two. Adding the walls in between for honeycombing. And then here we can do our half wall, low wall. And that's part of our shooting floor, remember? Adding frames above. And then we can wall in this section here. Ladder hatch to cap it off. And to add a half height floor in there as well. And we'll put low wall, um, we'll put boxes there as well in front of that low wall later on. Another ladder hatch frame just for stability. Put the ladder hatch in the bottom set. And a quick walkthrough just shows you super basic mobility shoot. Doing the same over here as well. Only way you can go wrong is forgetting the half wall low wall, so try not to forget that. Because it will create a nice peak in that shooting floor later on. Adding in our ladder hatch hip frame, our low wall has our peak into OC. And I'll close up that gap there as well. Could have done a full wall, but oh well. Right next, let's take a look at our open core. I'm only going to do the box placement for one side and then you can replicate it. Shouldn't really be too difficult, but I'll give the tutorial just in case some people need it. So we're adding in half walls with frames on top and a ceiling and that covers up our two loot rooms. So they're one and a half tall. Ramps in between for mobility. And then we'll cover up the rest of this open core. The ceiling in the middle is slightly taller to allow us to have a peek down inside of here. And then we can bring a triangle through the back there for our shelves. And add shelves on top of that as well. And let's go on to the box placement. So we're going to drop down inside and press this box as close as we can to the center of the OC. And then add one on the left and the right of that. Once both of those boxes are placed down, we can hop out of here and place them as far back against the wall as we can from outside the open core. Hopefully leaving room for a furnace in front. Second set is boxes on the left and right with a turret in the middle. And we'll throw that turret down now. And then the last row is just a full set of five boxes starting in the middle and then two on each side. Might need a boost to get that last one in or stand on top of a box or something, but yeah. That's the box placement. Slap that on the opposite side as well and that's OC done. Working on the third floor now, before we begin that, let's raise our honeycombing up to the correct height, matching the height of the rest of the base. We'll fill in the metal walls and then we'll fill in the stone walls on the corners. All right, now we can work on our defense floor where we have our bedroom spawns, our exit to shooting floor, a roof peak up, and a spot for a turret. There's quite a few things going on in here, so let's get through those. Placing down our bedrooms, they're going to be symmetrical apart from each other. This ramp down here is for boxes. And there's one of them on each of the sides. So that we can access some boxes from our bedroom. Fill them over like that so you can see they're diagonally opposite each other. And the boxes should place in nice and easy from in here. Next, we can add a wall and some door frames in front of our little drop down here. And of course, that's our way up from the open core. Towards the bedroom side, we're going to do a double door. And then on the right hand side, we'll do a single door. And we'll replicate that on the opposite side. That is our peak out onto shooting floor. And then that's our roof peak onto roof. And of course, there's two of them, one on each side. We'll do that again. Half wall, low wall. Let's us peek out to shooting floor. And then this single door lets us peek out onto roof. Then divide the entire floor with some garage doors. 
and cap off above our window there with a half wall just to match the height. There was ceiling on top of that and we'll quickly seal up this floor. Single doors in. Then throw your double door down beside your bedroom. We'll get the beds in first and then you can place those vending machines in. And those vending machines can be used to flex boom to bait an online raid or they're just extra storage part of the bedroom or a minicopter depot, anything like that. Just some high up storage uh, in the form of vending machines and they should place in nice and easily like that. Just enough space for two vending machines and the double door completely closes the gap. I'm going to break them though because they're loud and I don't want them in the, uh, the rest of the build video. Next, we're moving on to our freehands now, and I'm just building everything in twig. These are the four portions of freehands that we'll have in the base. And if I build them all around like that with the low walls in the right place, should make things easier to do. As I've offered in the past two videos, if you need any help with freehands, give me a shout on Discord. If I'm free, I'll come and jump on and build them on your server for you. Done quite a few servers now, so there's no shame in hitting me up if you would leak any help. I'm down to do that. It's all good. But yeah, that's how we do it, making sure our crosser is in the same place as mine. And then we bring it back and we check the stability. It's above 70. It's not 70, it's above 70. That means our frames are connected and our freehands will not decay. Then just so we don't forget, we're going to add in some floor frames above here. Slap a turret on top. I'm just doing it in this order so we don't forget. Of course, you guys could put these things down earlier and start working on compound quicker if you'd like. And uh, I'll be back with you guys when the rest of the freehands are all built. All right, now we're on to our wide gaps. We're going to build out with two squares, cap it with a triangle, and then we're going to build back to create the shape that I make here. Adding in a couple more triangles towards the main base, breaking these ones out of the way, building back towards and turning this one into a square instead. Makes it easier for us to expand out to our gatehouse. Nothing confusing going on there. Right now, these foundations will be decaying. They do need frames to connect with each other. So make sure those frames go down, or else those foundations are not technically touching. Then we can add out one more square with a couple of triangles on there. That's going to be our gatehouse. And it's just a bulk standard gatehouse here. And then we'll build out for our Satori Disconnectable using the four square method. Making sure we do our double half hole here. Don't want to forget that, or else your Disconnectable will not disconnect. Then uh, from here, decide if you want to do two sets of windows, garage doors, singles, whatever you like to do for your externals. And then break the foundations leading back and connect it all up with some floor frames. There we go, disconnectable done. That's one side done, everything's connected, nothing should decay. Let's do the exact same thing over here, and I'll be back with you guys when you're all caught up on the wide gaps.
All right, now that you're all caught up on the wide gaps, let's start adding in our frames. We're going to start on the side that works with main base. Uh, on the front side here, we do half walls, so don't forget those. It's all part of the shooting floor design, giving us some half-height windows that we can use to peek down. And then it expands even further up into the roof, so that we have a nice little pattern going on there. Half aesthetic and um, half of it obviously functional. So we'll do that on both sides. These are the main base sections we're working on right now. Don't forget our half holes. Raising it up. Next, we can move on to the freehand section. Freehands are just purely frames, nothing crazy going on. And same around the front here, we're raising our frames all the way up to the third height. And we'll just follow around the rest of the shooting floor, copying the frames as I do. Next, after frames, it is floors. So let's get that done now. Adding in our floors here. This one's going to come off main base to give us a nice little gap. And the freehands are standard, square in between. And we'll move around, doing the same over here. This section is a little bit different than what you might expect. We're going to do three triangles. Giving us a really nice peak down. And this little gap here is completely covered once we add this backwards embrasure. There we go. No one's going through that. You won't get pushed through. And we'll mimic the floors around this side as well. Same again, getting our backwards embrasures in to prevent anyone getting pushed through. Then these floors are as follows. And after that square, we're all done on that. Let's take a look at the windows. We're going to start on this three triangle section here where we build our roof pickup combination. Going to add this in for extra stability over here with the frames. And then we have backwards triangle roofs facing in to hide our turret from the outside. And we'll replicate that over here as well. Matching it all up so it's one and a half tall in total. Adding frames in to stabilize the platform for the turret to sit on. Backwards roofs to hide our turret away. Next, we can add a window beside that. And then on our free hands, we start off with half wall, then window, and some frames for stability and to help cover those gaps. And same over here. Working on the free hands again, half wall window with frames. And then in between that, in these little drop downs here, you can throw down some small boxes, gives you a better angle, allows you to use them a lot easier. And these little drops don't mess with mobility, you can run over those easy peasy. We'll add in our triangle roofs now, they, these both need to be the same grade, whether they're stone or metal, for them to work efficiently. And we'll get them on both sides. Still got some gaps in our shooting floor, so we'll head around this side over here. Window in the middle, windows on the left and right. Frames to add some stability and separate up this section with a floor on top. There we go. Same on this side over here. Replicate that. Easy peasy. We're going to add some frames in our shooting floor now. These are not completely necessary, I just like to add them in, mainly for stability. And it just makes sense in my head to throw these down as well. We'll add all of these all the way around. Just like that. Dropping down here, it's our roof exit, so we'll go ahead and upgrade this. And that's how we get out onto roof. We'll need that on both sides. There's two of them in total. Four roof pickups and two roof exits. Okay, shooting floor's done now. We're going to work mainly on the roof now. Let's start with our exits. Adding a floor here in between. 
walling in our uh, roof pickup and you'll see we have a half height slot there that's perfectly fit for a turret to the right of that we will have our roof pickup i mean our uh, roof exit sorry adding in floors here and it appears i missed a window let me slap that down now my bad adding in your floors they're just going to match what's below them basically uh, except for that one section where we don't have the peak down Okay, roof exit now. Two windows, two doors, and a couple ceilings, and that's our roof exit. Two of those. Easy peasy. In front of our roof exit, we have one more window to go down. And then from here, it's a whole load of backwards roofs. Uh, for this window section, we're going to make sure we don't activate the conditional. Very important for placing our roofs down. So we have our window uh, towards the, the turret pod. And we don't want our conditional to be activated. So we're going to rotate it to the point where there's no sticky out bump. So we like it like that. Super important for getting our backwards roofs. For some reason, there's some issue in the game where it doesn't like that conditional being active. So just make sure you don't have that, I guess. And that's going to affect the backwards facing triangle roofs that we're going to place soon. So just to confirm, you don't want the conditional active there. We have a couple of ramps in between these two parts here. Allows us to get up and use our roof more efficiently. And we can peek out from far away. Those are nice and easy to place. Then these ones are slightly more uh, annoying. You might need to place in some temporary floors to let you get these ones down. Uh, they're not too bad once you get the hang of it, but they're definitely annoying uh, to place, especially without being able to fly on the build server. Then on all the corner pods as well, we're going to do that. So these are the roofs that may potentially be blocked if you have your conditional active. So if you are seeing nothing but red and there's no hope of them getting placed, go and give that frame a rotate and it should work from there, assuming you can still rotate it. We'll get all them placed down. Getting into the swing of it now. Last one over here. And then it's just the windmill towers that we need to do on roof. And we're basically finished up here. And the last thing to tackle is compound. Assuming you've not rushed ahead and done the compound before me. Because of course you guys can build this in any order you want. I would expect that you guys practice everything on the build server first. So you'll find your own favorite way of doing the build steps. This is just how I've gone for it. Four windmill towers and four windmills to join them. Now we do compound. We're going to build out in the exact same way, two squares. And then I have a slightly different kind of bedroom combination that I do. Swap that out with someone else if you don't like mine, but I think it works well. Two beds, two boxes, two turrets all on a one height level, which I really like. So build that if you'd like. Two of them in total. And then in between the gatehouse and the bedroom, it takes three walls. And in total, there are four gaps. So that's 12 high walls to fill that all out. High wall placement's really easy, especially if you have symmetry. And that's all of our compound walls down. And if you're not sure how to do the barricades, I'll bring them out really quickly as well. We'll get some temporary floors. And our barricades as well. And you should be able to do it with just two. And that'll get the job done nicely. Those combined with your turret should make your compound pretty tough to breach. And yeah, once you've done that, that completes the base design. Hopefully boys and girls did enjoy this one. If you did, then please feel free to leave me a like and drop me a comment down below. Hope to see the space out there in some servers. Remember to check out Bandicamp and use code SPINKY. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cinnabit.